Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, coming to you live-ish, depending on when you're listening to this, from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in the Mayhem Studios, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show! Tonight's guest, <laughs> nobody but the usual co-hosts to join us, including, uh, including um, oh look, there's an image of him eating a hot dog in New York City. Just put that in your mind. It's just like Saturday Night Live. It's Papa Lunchbox. I don't know what I'm working on here, man. You have a, you have a picture of me eating a hot dog in New York? Yes. What? Where did you get this? <laughs> NSA, man. NSA. Where did? Where, no, 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 no. Don't, don't sidestep with your jokes. Where did you get a picture of me eating a hot dog in New York, Sorg? Where did this come from? It came from um, um, Joe at uh, MotherfuckerCast.com. Oh. oh, I know Joe. Okay. I know Joe. Okay. He's not, He's fine. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hey, I'm Lunchbox. I like to eat hot dogs in New York and in other locations, and that is the most important thing that you will know about me. Also with us, he's tra- – no, wait. <laughs> no, I moved the thing. It's not the guy treading water in Johnstown. He's, uh, uh, he's, he's, he's got the hamster wheels going, so he's still got power out there in Monroeville. It's the Riz. Riz plays games. Uh, yeah. And um, Sorg. Hmm. I'm just going to screen share this here. Um, I'm playing a game right now. Oh, oh. We're, we're doing a podcast. Riz. <laughs> What's happening here? What is I'm, happening? We have audio listeners. Can you see this? This has not worked. Oh, wait, wait, it's John Cena. Hey, John uh, Cena. What's your, so, what are you yeah. doing, John Cena? It's John Cena's sexy high school adventure. What? What? <laughs> you scared me. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Well, you have I, fun with that, and we'll check in on that throughout the uh, evening. I will, and and I I I, I wish you can hear the sounds coming out of this out of this no, music right now. Um. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. It, it's John Cena's music in like I want to say flute or maybe an oboe. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> sure. Maybe an you know, oboe. Maybe. Mm, mm. <clears throat> All right, um, I'm gonna, I'm right, right. Yeah, probably, probably here. cut that out here. Also yeah. joining us from uh, Texas, where he's having, having his own sexy college adventure, uh, but he's on break from that, so it's less <laughs> sexy. It's Eamon Payton in Corpus Christi, Texas. He's a. <laughs> is that Eamon to please on the Twitter? Sorry, let me ask you this. Isn't life just a sexy adventure? <laughs> <laughs> that's the Some, spirit. That, that, that's, that's the spirit. That's, that is a good joke, Eamon. That sounds that like the really new tagline. It's a great, it's a great, great, great thought. Will, Will, I think that's the new uh, outro tagline for our Power Hour. Isn't life just a sexy adventure? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, How you that's doing? True. How you doing? Wait, that's, you're that's gonna right take my watch the new awesome? fireworks. Uh, wait, no, that wasn't my that wasn't my outro. Never mind. I have no idea what you're talking about, Riz. What? We're losing Power Riz. Hour. We're losing what? Riz. Anyways, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, and uh, this is where we talk wrestling. What? And you can check us out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com and all the other shows, and you can follow us on all the social medias and all the um, all the uh, applicable um, um, applicable um, applicable uh, places to podcast and video and such. Subscribe to us, especially please please comment with us. Please comment with us over on the iTunes. If Don't. you comment on the iTunes and leave a star and leave a review, and you. You you add us on the Twitters or social medias or something, I'll send you something special. Ooh. I'll send you something yeah, dick, special. Dick pics. No, that's not necessarily it. Is that no? not, not mine at least. Um, but yes. <laughs> so please do that. And also please uh, join us here live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Uh, or stick around if you want for the Indie Mayhem Show. We're scheduled to have a longtime friend of the show, 
Big League, John McChesney joining us this evening. He's going to be actually debuting with uh, Global Force Wrestling, I believe, this weekend, if I'm not mistaken. So looking forward to that discussion. Uh, and uh, please follow us if you're digging the show, if you're uh, uh, finding value in the show, want to contribute back to it. There's plenty of ways to do it. One is the Patreon at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Give us your money. That's one way to do it. But we, we need give your you, money. but we, we need give your you, money, please. But we give you something back for that, whether it be girly giggles or whether it be Woo-hoo. special things like saying your name on this podcast, like uh, our friends from the wrestling revolution.com. Uh, Antonio Garza, who actually joined us last week. Or was this the part recently? where we woo? No, I didn't do that. No, we're woo-woo. Riz. Woo-woo. Riz. What's the attention. Spanish word for woo? <laughs> wow. El, El woo. El woo. El woo. El woo. Yes, that's French. We don't have any French patreons. You could be the first though, Frenchies. Uh, and also, uh, Frenchies, a longtime Jesus. patreoner is Bo. Uh, well, again, both longtime supporters. You can check that out. You get the exclusive state of the show and uh, put us questions and, and special stuff every once in a while up there as well. As little as a, a buck, a buck a show. That's it. Is that worth it to you? Are you getting a buck's worth of laughter and, and Tom Flurry out of it? Uh, you definitely are if you listen to Gold this week. I can tell you that. It's some amazing stuff. Uh, and you can also support us other ways. Uh, lots of links over there on the right. And support our friends, of course, also at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We'll hear about some of those a little bit later. In the meantime, first topic of the day. Let's uh, talk about John Cena, shall we? Are we allowed to talk about John Cena? Uh, yeah. uh, time to talk. So I'm already, I'm already talking about John Cena. I know. There is. Didn't you start that question earlier today? We'll get to that. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, on audio, this is going to be the album art, by the, the way, so don't worry about it. Yeah, Man, the graphic department's in overtime. That, please, okay. Uh, All right, I'm back. LB, um, actually, LB, you, you started this, and, and Riz, I do want to go to the question on Facebook as well. Uh, mm-hmm. But but LB, you, you were really kind of taken by, it's probably not the right word, uh, by, by Cesaro's match with uh, John Cena. That was the main event of Raw last night. That was great. Super good. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. I think we can all agree. Let's start out on a on a positive note. It was super good. Mm-hmm. It, it was super good. Yes. All right. Yes. We're all on board. What's next? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, You're the one that wanted a discussion. But no. Um, but It's great. I, I, no, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I kind of I started having the discussion about like, you know, this whole thing was, you know, to – maybe change the public opinion of John Cena because, you know, every week he's having these incredible matches with talented wrestlers that people, you know, really like. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's putting other wrestlers over. He's making NXT look really good. Right. I mean, he, he uh, put Kevin Owens over. Um, and I, I feel like that this whole John Cena open U.S. title defense thing is just good for everybody. But you guys say because for all involved, even even aside from Rusev, he's not just leading to his next title defense with Randy Orton the next month, right? That's right. what we got yeah. tired of. Yeah. Right. So he is very much mixing it up and mm-hmm. giving serious chances to guys the last few months, and and and, and everybody looks good. Cena looks good. The opponents look good. It's great. Mm-hmm. Everybody's it's happy times. And I think I think we get in this discussion. I was like, yeah, but but Cesaro got pinned clean. You know, I was like. And so I, that's not a big deal. Yeah, I mean, there's a certain point where, and, and I saw this discussion happening somewhere else on the internets too, where it's like, you know, when are we going to kind of sink in in this conversation that wins and losses don't matter? Mm. I mean, everybody's saying, well, Brian hasn't won for so many months. It's like, wait, did I just fix it? Right, well, I don't know white? about that. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 okay. I, I agree completely that wins and losses don't matter in, in, in that sort of sense. Yeah. Um, I do wish I, I kind of wish that they showed the because um, apparently when the cameras were off the air, Cena had Cesaro back in the ring and, and like gave a, a nice speech to kind of like, you know, sort of like put him over, basically. And, yeah. and I would love for them to have shown that, you know, like, but because. Go ahead. Go ahead I, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, that's what I was going to say. Go ahead, Riz. But, okay, uh, but but the way you're saying it is, it's never going to be shown anywhere. 
the, the fact is we live in a time now where this is always on whenever their cameras are off. Mm -hmm. This phone is your camera. And this phone captured the Cesaro Cena moment. Mm -hmm. And you know they're going to try to play off of that now. Because they know it's already on, it's already recorded. They know it's on YouTube. They know everybody has it. They know they all, everybody has seen it. So I think if they were smart, they would run off of this and say this is the time when Cesaro becomes a bigger name than you know Vince McMahon thinks he is. And it is it is the first thing you see. Oh wait, I think I got the right one. I might got. No, I got another one actually. <clears throat> Uh, but if you type in the right thing, it's the first thing that came up on the YouTube. But isn't that interesting, too? Uh, this is kind of a side talk on here, I think. But you mentioned how everybody has a phone. And, I mean, it was always no video, you know. And I always kind of, like, made sure I didn't have my phone out much, you know, uh, at least doing the video, making sure I'm taking pictures and stuff. But now, after you did uh, the rock thing that looked like it was mostly shot on phones and he's Instagram videoing himself and all this stuff, you just kind of gave all the fan, fans license to shoot all the stuff at live shows, and yes. and and you have and they have the license to play that video right for their profit. I, I my point. I, and right. I hope that they do. I, I really yeah, I, I hope they do, do too. Well, there's a there's uh, a, I just uh, feel sorry like, sorry before you get that uh, there uh, I'm looking at YouTube so I'm seeing that from last night and there's nine thousand views on there. I don't see any content ID on it. Um, yeah, it not not yet. Anyways. <laughs> But it is something that, uh, like, WWE, and, and from my little bit with Content ID and some issues in over the last few months, they would have to find the clip and request it pulled because it's not going to match anything that they have. Uh, yeah. My, so. my, thing is, my thing is, I feel like it just needs to be shown in that mainstream because they will show a side of John Cena that is not necessarily being shown. Mm -hmm. um, because as much as I, I respect him and his ability, and as much as he has been putting on incredible matches as of late, uh, Wherever town they're going to be in next week, they're still going to boo them. They right. are, because that's been the case time in and time out. Because that's the, the internet is such a stubborn place. Yeah, and that's that the norm. That's, that's, the people go there, people, like like uh, Lunchbox said, are stubborn. <laughs> and they will boo John Cena because that is the cool thing to do. Yeah, but well, how I many times? I don't even know if it's just the internet. I what think it's that? a thing that people are sort of taught to do. We, we, it's like, also think, they're taught to do because they see it every week on Raw. That's what mm -hmm. I mean. Yeah, like it's a thing people do nowadays, not because of they they mean it. It's because it's the thing you're supposed to do, kind of. You know, it's yeah, a thing they see people right. do on Raw yeah. every week. It's that's it's the why, same. That, it's it, <laughs> it's just like uh, everybody chanting "New Day sucks." You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. At yeah. first, they didn't like them, and they genuinely thought they suck. But now they're completely over with the crowds. But people still chant "New Day sucks" because that's what happens. Mm -hmm. That's what happens when um, when New Day comes out. Like when Kurt Angle was a thing, and they all chanted "You suck" in time with his music, and it was because they didn't think that he sucked. Mm -hmm. But that's what happened when. Yeah. Kurt Same with. Um, for the, like the year or two years or so when Ryback was getting Goldberg chants, mm -hmm. like no matter what he did, he was getting those chants because people heard it yeah. on like a big like post mania raw or mm -hmm. something, and, and that and, was, like then just started doing it. And that was a concern that we were going to get people chanting Husky Harris at Bray Wyatt, and thankfully yeah. that didn't catch on. I think it one night that him. happened. Yeah, it, we, you heard it on. You heard one guy, you know, three guys on camera, like just mm -hmm. off of the microphone, like, uh, but the crowd didn't hear it or didn't understand it. And and it didn't catch on, thankfully, or that would have ruined Bray Wyatt, to be honest. Yeah, and those aren't internet, and and the people that catch on to chants like that and make them a thing, those aren't necessarily like the internet fans. Those are just the people that watch the show and want to be a part of it. You know, that one of the big things about WWE and the environment is like chanting and all that kind of stuff. So, I think that's kind of the play in it. I was actually thinking about this today, and I think because uh, because Riz brought up the question of why do people hate John Cena. Right, right. Really good, uh, really no, no, good no, no, thread no, no, on no, Facebook. No. What I said, the question that I proposed to the on the Facebook page was, why do you still hate John Cena after last night? After last night. Uh, yeah, I, I'll I'll go off of that. Um, okay. I, I not this isn't my opinion, uh, but I do feel there is an aspect <clears throat> of the the product in WWE has changed. Uh, and Cena 
is is very much a product of the ruthless aggression era. I mean, he kind of made the ruthless aggression era technically. Mm-hmm. Um, and that era, fans were very much behind wrestlers that worked a specific style. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. And and you know like your Cena's, your Randy Orton's, your Batista's, uh, even God like your Edges and and your Chris Jericho's and stuff like that. And now whether because of the internet or because of whatever else, the style of WWE has changed, and the things that people get behind are the more highly paced, uh, high athletic uh, uh, matches. Those kind of style of matches, the matches that Cena's been having with like Cesaro and Neville and uh, guys like that, but. While Cena's had some great matches this year, he also has had some bad ones, like the uh, the matches with Rusev. I, I I mean, obviously that's an objection, uh, but a lot of people I know didn't really enjoy those matches, and I feel like those matches were very much a callback to like the ruthless aggression style, which was like stipulation gimmick matches that involved a lot of like like. I, I can't think of the word for it, but like the, the like they did the whole getting exploded by fireworks spot and and all the you know that kind of stuff like that kind of style got over in that in that era that John Cena rose to prominence. Now the style has changed, and John Cena has been proving that he can adapt to that if he wants to. Um, you know, even people like Randy Orton have moments sometimes where they put on really great matches where it shows them that hey, they're more than just this style. Um, I think it's just the case of times and I think people see John Cena and remember what he was, you know, and what he, the, the style that he kind of represented. If that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I agree. And I want to also mention that, um, you put a happy thought into my head because when they got blown up by fireworks and how, excited Rusev was when he found the fireworks and the look of joy on his face. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it's interesting. Um, You know, I I take from this a little bit of, you know, the discussion has been, you know, uh, um, you know, Cena often says, I'm waiting for the next guy to take my place. He says that a lot of times, right? He's like, I I want somebody to be able to take my place because I can't do this forever. And, uh, and 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 it's amazing that he has. He's outlasted Hulk Hogan. He's outlasted Stone Cold. He's outlasted anybody who was big on top for any period of time. <coughs> and I think they've learned from their mas- mistakes of trying to put Hulk Hogan out to pasture early. And and unfortunately, you know, Rock and Austin had to leave or pursued other things. So you didn't have them as long as you had a Cena. Cena is wrestling first, and uh, and plays well, plays ball. And I feel like when you have him going out there and uh, doing what he's doing with Cesaro, doing what he's doing with um, um, Steen uh, Owens, uh, you know, I, I think that is, you know, you got to think Cena goes out and does what he's told to do. He's a soldier in this, right? He doesn't yeah. make decisions. He has influence, I'm sure. They listen to his opinions. But there's definitely, and I think you can see it a little bit of, he was trying to prove Cesaro, Right. You know, after mm-hmm. that thing a few months ago, it was like, I, you know, I don't know. Fans aren't connecting with them. You know, uh, I think that was the let's go freaking tear the house down with this guy. And hopefully they'll motivate these idiot writers to do something with him. Right. Yeah. And and I still go down to this. The writer is just I don't know what the hell they're doing with these guys and where they came from or how they're putting the show together. I understand it's complicated, but uh, it's not good. And 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 it it seems like we get to points where we have a Cesaro Cena match and realize oh we're about to see something special like despite the writing. You know. yeah. I, I remember they had didn't they have a match in I want to say Germany or something like that. Mm-hmm. Or he or he br- or Cena brought somehow it happened that Cena brought uh, Cesaro out. And did the pretty much said the same thing about hey this guy is going to be the future. You guys look at him, and then he left the ring and let him do his own thing. It, it just seems like he's also trying to, you know, push along. Hey, maybe these guys would like some help too. Something that maybe Hogan or Rock or whoever 
wouldn't do in the past. And I, I think some of the contempt that comes with Cena, not not the stuff that's necessarily his fault, is that we have those special moments happen sometimes, and it's never followed up on properly. Exactly. He's been screwed a lot of times with that, with Cesaro, with with Zach, well, yeah, Zack Ryder, like Dolph Ziggler, uh, you know, Wade Barrett. I mentioned, like, I feel like one of the biggest turning points for like when people started to really turn on Cena was that was after the Nexus storyline because mm-hmm. that was the first time that Cena won what he 100 percent should not have, mm-hmm. and you know, that's that, that. I think that held a lot of contempt for people because they've had. They've done it on multiple occasions where it's like we're going to push this guy and then they don't capitalize on it. And you know, King Barrett's wrestling, you know, fucking pre-show matches and stuff like that. And Dolph Ziggler, who like almost saved the company at Survivor Series, is now like in this like weird side story. And like because of that, like we can't. We those moments are special, but like that. But there's always the thing in the back of our head is like, oh, they'll fuck this up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. I, I have a friend um, who he really likes NXT, and anytime somebody gets called up to the main roster, he gets this disappointed look on his face. And I'm like, "What? Why? <laughs> what's your problem? What's what's the deal?" And he's like, "Well, they're gonna fuck it up. They're gonna screw this up. They're gonna take this character that I like, and they're gonna call him up to the main <laughs> roster, and they're gonna ruin it." And I'm like, "That's not as true as it used to be. Yeah. I mean, it's still possible, but..." You know, they they have a better chance now uh, to than be, they to, would have. I'm, I'm to, glad you brought that point up mm-hmm. because the, the the rumor was, and I believe it, it, I believe it to be true. When they were in Japan, they gave a try, they gave tryouts to uh, Nakamura and Okada. And the first five responses that I saw on Twitter were, "They're gonna, ru- oh, why do they have this uh, guy do uh, this?" Mm-hmm. Right. Oh no! Right. They're gonna ruin Nakamura. They're just gonna like ruin they Okada. ruined Prince Devin, and right? Be, and and that's after all that's been happening. So yeah, far yeah. With with Kevin Owens, you know, mm-hmm. in, in like less than a year in the company, like being one of the top stars mm-hmm. on the main show, like with and, all they've done with Neville and stuff like that, like that's still happening. Is, uh, and all I'm saying is, they're not even signed yet. Mm-hmm. It's not even a done deal. They 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 were there for a tryout. Let it happen. Let it go. Let, let something happen and then see what happens. I, I, you can't go by, especially commenters, tweeters. <clears throat> I mean, that's the, 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 there's very. Well, it was, it was, uh, some friends, of the, friends of ours that oh. were talking about that. Oh, and, and then we uh, hold we you in higher regard, it. mayhem listeners. Yeah. Yes. This isn't the, this isn't the Todd and Jerry talk wrestling podcast. Mm-mm. Yeah. I think, uh, and if had, I if I accidentally have, named some ties and I'm sorry if there's a Todd and Jerry that accidentally named your podcast, I apologize. I'm sure it's a very <laughs> podcast. There's a um, there's a show called the Ten Minute Podcast that uh, yes. I really enjoy, and uh, twice now they've done episodes where they're like basically simulating a wrestling podcast. Oh no! <laughs> and uh, it's not <laughs> they're they're not doing our podcast. Okay, okay. but I feel like they're doing. Uh, podcasts that i have heard um, <laughs> on that on that have you i know you guys have turned me on to some of you guys have turned me on to the we watch I wrestling and there was a sure. there was a couple weeks ago sure. where somebody was saying about some wrestlers that i think were in pwg and they're yelling like, what <clears throat> podcast are you listening to that is trash stop listening to Who's putting these thoughts in your heads? Yeah, <laughs> and that's that's the thing because because if you're listening to this, uh, unfortunately, I think I, I'm and I know I spout opinions I hear from Justin Labar, the guys I talk to at the wrestling shows and everything. I mean, we all do. Uh, uh, Amen. Amen. Re. re- Phrases uh, Matt Stroud all night or uh, all night long. Brandon, Brandon Stroud, Stroud, I'm sorry, Brandon, Brandon Stroud. Stroud. Matt, Matt, Stroud. Matt Stroud's Brandon another Stroud. guy that I gotta have coffee with. Um, but anyways, who Matt or Brandon Stroud? M- Matt. Matt, are you coming to Texas and not telling me? This way? No, 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 no. There's a Matt Stroud that lives Let's in here. Let's go Pittsburgh. to Texas. <laughs> That's a whole other thing. I'm not gonna name drop more, but um, it just did sort of. Uh, it's just, just I, I just got confused, man. Uh, but anyways, what was my point? What oh, was my point? Sorry, you haven't seen confused yet until you play this game. But still, like, but we're <laughs> we're filtering. I mean, we're taking in and filter and, and and this is like I'm talking politics a little bit. Um, those concepts, yeah. are, and we're trying to throw away the trash, right? Like, if, if 
I just deleted no DQ from my Twitter because I one I'm so it, none of their, none of their oh, articles make no sense DQ. and and I was in Twitter and they did a full screen app takeover and I'm like I almost wanted to do a content setting like I uh, you your your ad, your ads are annoying it makes you unreadable um, unfollow but I, I I made it but I just called them out on the podcast so yeah there there you go the, my, my power of numbers of all you people listening to this podcast anyways hi hi but. But, but 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 let's elevate the conversation a little bit. Have you guys tried dropping into like some of the Google Plus communities? For I mean, you guys have all been on message boards. Some of them are just like, "What's happening here?" You know. Yeah. And I, I feel like I feel like we have a good level of conversation on our our, our wrestling mayhem show groups, right? Sorg, I have to uh, refute that. I do not go on message boards. <laughs> Aside from Facebook and our group, I'm saying. I, I think nowadays social media has become the message board. So right. Like, like right. the message boards of 2005 are like now just. But they're right. still Facebook. here. Yeah. Right. And but, they're even angrier than you are on Twitter and Facebook. But we also, <laughs> but we also filter things too. Like I follow the people that, you know, if somebody has a really annoying opinion, like I, there's a couple people that we follow on the meme account that I've considered on following because they have just these really condescending opinions all night long, and it feels like they're complaining about everything. And even who, the good who, who thing, is it? let's call them out. Let's name. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh. Um, let's name names. No, name. Publicly shame I'm them. I'm not going to publicly it. shame them. I'm just going to quietly unfollow <laughs> them so I don't have to see it. Right? But we we don't have Sorry, to sit there and me. listen to it. But is it me? No, it's not you. It's not you. It's not anybody <laughs> on the show. Okay. Is it, is it Lunchbox? It's yes, it's Lunchbox. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah, because I, I do it. it more than three times a week nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it it's frustrating that uh, that all this is out there, but um, social media gives voice to you know <clears throat> to everyone. You know, mm-hmm. everyone now has a public platform to voice their opinion. And the fact that everyone is so angry, yeah, they're playing off of each other. But it's also kind of – it shows how much goodwill WWE has burned through over the years. Right. Like how many times have they set something up and it's like this is going to be amazing and it, and they just completely blow it. You know, we talked about on the wrestling podcast – or I'm sorry, the video game podcast uh, earlier tonight about Sega – and how they've really killed the goodwill with everybody, right? And how uh, I said that you have to have an Assassin's level, uh, Assassin's Creed or higher level Sonic game for me to care. You can't just have a good Sonic game to get me back into it. Because the yeah, what, cause, what was the last good Sonic game? Was it yeah. three? Was it Sonic and Knuckles? Yes, it was. Right. Sonic and, 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 Knuckles, and, and, yes. and then, but and then certain fans can say, "What was the last good WrestleMania?" I, I would refute that uh, right off the top, but 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 those that's the attitude going around for some mm-hmm. people, right? And I don't even watch that stuff anymore. Back when it was cool, when 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 so and so was in there, well, you, and name your era, and, and all of them have been named. Trust me. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, from that guy I haven't, still I haven't is always a thing. I haven't watched. <laughs> I haven't watched since Stone Cold was in there too. I haven't watched since uh, Batista was in there. You know what I mean? Like it, it's yeah. it's it's that you know. Well, I feel old it's now. where where it hits, right? Uh, but uh, but 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 they do have that problem, and I think there's a certain there's that Hulu again. I go back to that Hulu commercial. I'm not a wrestling fan. I'm a WWE fan. There are people that like what they're seeing, and or maybe yeah. only don't watch the three hours of Raw, and and that's who they're getting because that's the mass appeal, and that's mm-hmm. how they're mm-hmm. doing okay. You're just losing us vocal wrestling fans that have podcasts, I guess. Yeah, and, and I think I think Lunchbox does have a really good point in the fact that it is not Thank you. Thing. <laughs> uh, it's it, it's not unwarranted sometimes. Like sometimes it is, but I, I think in a lot of cases, yeah, it is that that's sort of you know syndrome where it's like you've been beaten down a bit, so why would you you know believe it necessarily? Um, I think I, I I don't remember what week of raw was but i saw someone post like the ratings for like the the week of raw or the viewership for the week of raw and then like the one like a year before and it was down by like a million wow and it's like that that says something like yeah. that's you know that that that's you know saying something in the end um i i think that's also why i know they're not as big but companies like lucha underground not only have a following, but have a very passionate following mm. of people being like, "This is amazing! You need to check this out." Not just not just fans, but people who are 
committed to the product and spreading it. WWE has those fans, and obviously WWE has more fans than anyone, you know, going right now. But you know, it, it's the balance. It's like it's basically a scale of uh, between the people who really love it and the people who really you know either hate it or just despise it or whatever. And then TNA is like all all the way down here. So, <laughs> that's, that's the, TNA has like four fans. TNA, TNA is lowering the bar for everyone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, and I feel bad. Like it's, it's, I really feel like, you know, aside from it employing very talented wrestlers, it's bad for business that it continues right. to be out there. It gives a bad name right. to wrestling. Right. I think, and I still go back to, and please, if you're like a diehard TNA fan, I want to meet you. And even Dustin sounds like he's wavering Dustin. lately. I mean, wait, I mean, Dustin is not as hard on it as, as well, especially versus you know Mike, for instance. Oh, he's, but, uh, what's that? He, go ahead. He's gotten better. Yeah. <laughs> he's as, as, some, as in he's turning to the. I almost at, yelled at him. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Um, but anyways, but it, you know, it's like who is you know? Did you? Yeah. No, no, uh, no knock on Dustin because I don't think Dustin is this, but uh, uh, fanatical TNA fans are like the most like like. TNA can do no wrong, like, un, like apologetic, like people. I, I've literally seen people like when they had the whole like, for example, the China tour that they were doing, and then they like suddenly canceled. <laughs> After like every all the, all the like TNA fanatic fans were like, the China tour never existed. It never said anything <laughs> about the China tour. Mm-hmm. It's like, by the way, for someone who works in, in in wrestling, who had somebody that was going to be at a, at a wrestling event but couldn't because of the TNA China tour, the TNA China tour existed. Right. Okay, it was right. a thing. Right. But, right. but uh, you, I have another another example for that one. Remember when? Uh, oh man, who was it that? Uh, Meltzer, Meltzer. He he told he said he was talking about the Spike TV deal. Oh yeah. How that was going to not be a thing anymore and how many of the people on there jumped on his ass yeah mm-hmm. and and then when whenever uh destination america came around and then they had a little problem with that or then, then there was a rumor about them not having tna anymore or impact wrestling whatever the fuck it's called and and how many people jumped on Meltzer even though he I don't think he even reported it saying that this that this is false you don't know what you're talking about this is just another PWI thing and then it, it kept on going on and on and on and it just started like bugging the crap out of me yeah it, 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 it just was one of those things where just stop if your thing goes, it goes. Nobody's watching it, anyways. Yeah, apolo- apologetic wrestling fans are are are, in, are sometimes a little bit out there at times, even for like WWE ones. But TNA ones are like a whole new level. Yeah, mm-hmm. like because those fans are in denial. Yeah, ninety yeah. percent of the time they don't they don't want to believe it's true, but their product isn't good. Mm-hmm. Um, I. Uh, Lost my train of thought. It's gone. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> it's totally gone. Good. Fuck. I'm sorry. That's okay. We got. We have to move on anyways here. But uh, I think it was a great conversation. If you guys enjoyed it. Oh hey, I, well I do want to touch base with the chat room. There was some great conversation happening in there. One uh, mainstream Matt's asking, did the WWE ever recover from the invasion? I, I think I don't want to say oh, absolutely. They I don't. Did. I don't, oh, I don't <clears> want to say they didn't recover. I think that that's when the dip was happening, just because the industry changed and they also mentioned um and, and please uh, uh, if you haven't already please share the link to this if you find it again uh but uh madden has a epic editorial on wrestle zone where he lays out the uh, long deterioration of pro wrestling audience since the 1980s and beyond Ooh. so i'd like i'd really be interested to read that one as well so um but anyways so and uh, uh from there uh, well if you want to support wrestling <laughs> <laughs> that you enjoy and sometimes support mm-hmm. some guys that are maybe on some of these programs that you don't really care for, but you still get a chance. PittsburghWrestling.com, Super Indy 14, for instance, with some guys from Ring of Honor, for instance, uh, that, that we talked to over on the Indie Mayhem show, Ray, Ray Rowe, Cedric 
uh, Alexander. Uh, great guys like Dylan Bostic and Sugar Dog. Every time you say that, I think you're going to say Cedric the Entertainer. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Every single There's time. A sm- I'm getting better early on. That was happening a lot. Really? <laughs> I, I will be completely honest. Because I'm like, who else has the name Cedric? Yeah. No, the one with the mohawk. Got it. Uh, but anyways, the, one, the, the mohawk and the flips. But... <laughs> <laughs> what? You never know what's going to happen. I actually got a sign up form for all the wrestling around Sorgatron Media. If you go to wrestlingmamshow.com, right at the top there, it's going to pop up. And then you can sign up for the newsletter, get some, get a free digital download, find out everything going on, including what's going on here with the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And you just missed, if you weren't part of that, the big sale that we had over the weekend with all the Night of the Superstar shows and 50% <laughs> off digital downloads. Uh, but you can support indie wrestling, support the local guys. And uh, everything else, and even some some cool other stuff like like uh, documentaries, like uh, Finding Zach Gowan. Uh, there's a there's can I talk about this yet? There's a certain uh, movie coming out about Virgil. <laughs> there is. <laughs> That's on its way. Uh, that I can tell you. And uh, if you follow my Twitter, I think I'm going to be talking about it a little bit more here in the coming weeks. So uh, please uh, add Sorgatron for that. PittsburghWrestling.com support great wrestling and support this show through that. So, I couldn't come up with a clever t- title for our next topic, as you can tell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just like I just want to talk about Japan because mm-hmm. something significant happened in Japan. So, hold on, hold on. Oh yes. Before we move on to the Japan discussion, I would like to uh, just kind of suck everybody's dick here and say that oh. was a great first segment. That was, <laughs> that was a really good high, discussion. High five, everybody. High five. Everybody high five. High five. That was fantastic. Like, oh, go. That was good stuff. So, so you got a fish or what? I mean, you want me to drop it <laughs> on my pants or what? So, <laughs> no. Okay. No, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. You're we're good. far away anyway, and I'm not sucking your dick through the camera again. Damn, Damn it. Can't so, let's talk about Japan. Uh... <laughs> Japan. Speaking of dick sucking through cameras. <laughs> Whoa. Yep. It's good wrestling talk somewhere in there. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> I got up at 5.30 in the morning, and I, I, I poured my bowl of Fruity Pebbles. I told you. I told you. Sa- Shaq's on the cover. Brewed some coffee. Watch some damn, the cover, by the way. <laughs> damn fine wrestling is what I saw. Chris Jericho Neville, Amazing. Divas match, passable, and then, <laughs> and then Brock Lesnar no selling Kofi Kingston, and then, <laughs> and then Brock Lesnar murdering Kofi Kingston, and then Brock Lesnar uh, uh, murdering the New Day and absorbing all of their positivity powers. <laughs> <laughs> but Brock Lesnar learned a new move. Oh, what 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 move was that? Power positivity. Positive power positivity. There you go. I, I thought I thought I thought you were going to say car door support, but that's for later. No, that's later. It's definitely what? later. Watch out! They should add a splash zone to the front row. <laughs> wrong, <laughs> apparently, <laughs> but it's car doors. Uh, uh, no, yeah, actually, yeah, that was one of the stories. Apparently, when he threw the car door, a piece flew off of it and hit a fan, and to the point where they did rush them to the back uh, so EMTs could look at them, and uh, but they were they were fine and came out for the rest of the show so mm-hmm. anyways um and the biggest of it um it was such a surreal thing one one it was you know the announcers weren't there it was it was a big news story they were not there live i'm like i have eyeballs it was obvious thank you there was barely a set there it wasn't even the travel set that i thought we were gonna get it was just kind of like we had a screen in a corner and that was it like i felt like i was watching superstars that was awesome <laughs> and uh and it was very light, you know? It, the lighting even was, like, there were shadows, and it wasn't really lit for TV completely. It felt like a Ring of Honor show. Um, you know, more of a Ring of Honor show than NXT already does, you know? Because NXT has a lot of light screens for that to be a Ring of Honor show. And uh, and we had streamers, and, and I thought a tremendous match there. And uh, and then and then John Cena's tag match promptly put me back to sleep. So I mean, I, I thought it was the perfect package, and I got I got a nap. Uh, but uh, what what'd you guys think of that uh, overall? I mean, especially uh, I want to get you here first. Uh, I I thought it was really fantastic. Uh, definitely a groundbreaking 
kind of I, I really loved at points when uh, Michael Cole was like very much reiterating for like the first time ever a live broadcast from Japan mm-hmm. like like I, I feel like there was a real like stick you like fuck you to TNA for doing theirs on tape delay yeah. but uh <laughs> yeah uh but no it was fantastic um the the atmosphere was so much different it, it was not as like starkly different as like a regular Japanese wrestling show because mm-hmm. I think a lot of them were like WWE fans and 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 stuff like that but it was still a, there was still a noticeable difference um I said it on Twitter as well. Fucking hell, the commentary was amazing. Why can mm. can, Why can we not have that every week? Like Michael Cole dropping FMW and Dragon Gate references. Like okay, mm-hmm. um, that works for me. Uh, yeah, it, it was really spectacular. Um, uh, and obviously, big you know the big Finn Balor NXT title win was great and and really. I honestly, I think really. That and Brock Lesnar really did sell the show, in my opinion. Uh, when it comes to like the big matches that I was looking forward to, um, and yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I hope they do more stuff like it. Awesome, awesome. Uh, what, what, uh, Riz, you watched it, right? I caught. I, I did not watch it live like you guys did because mm-hmm. uh, I, I I was sleeping, um, but. I, I did catch the – I actually caught the dark match that was put in the light with the uh, with the tag match with John Cena in it, which even though it put Sorg to sleep, wasn't that bad. It was pretty good. No, no, uh, no. I was seriously tired. I was up until 3 in the morning playing Bioshock. I want to make that clear. I, you I have sure. no – I have no – I'm just like, this is um, probably something I can miss out those off. I'm fine. But – that is, I, I I totally agree with what uh, we, uh, Russell fan uh, Eamon said. What the fuck? <laughs> I, I, I even went Russell fan on you there, Eamon. Jesus Christ! Listen, uh, we're all getting you names guys. mixed up. Sorg was calling me Will earlier. It's all good. It's okay. Who are you, Sawtooth? Wow! <laughs> hey, hey, hey! hey that, you're breaking kayfabe. Um, <laughs> but just like Eamon said. Uh, that main event, the NXT title match was insane with the streamers and the, and everything else in between when he win it, when he, with him winning it and with everything happening. Ah, so much fun. It, it was so much fun. It, was it, fun felt like they put in, it felt like they put an effort to commentary wise to tell a cohesive story. Like I really mm-hmm. love that. Like Michael Cole in the beginning of the match brought up the, or maybe it was Byron Saxon that brought it up. That like Kevin Owens hated, you know, he hated having to get his passport and all this, you know, stuff together. You know, he hated the food, he hated the, and and everything about Japan. And mm-hmm. then during the match, Kevin Owens is like, "I hate the city." I hate. <laughs> <laughs> but here, I think that had to do that. Probably had had uh, Owens going, "Hey, look, tell him, tell them I hate everything." Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's fun. Sometimes it feels just like the two, like the match and the commentaries are just in two different spectrums. Sometimes, yeah. Like it yeah. feels like they really melded together and worked. Yeah. Um, no weird, no weird moments in commentary. Well, well Michael Cole mispronouncing Bull Nakano kind of pissed me off. Yeah, well, of course, it did it. <laughs> I th- did it's he okay. pronounce it like Bobby does? I, I'm pretty sure. Knock, 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 knock. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I misspelled it on Twitter. I was, it was too early for me to care to check. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but, but still I think there was two Z's in there so yeah, I think and, there were <laughs> Wolves again. Uh, Wolves again. yeah. Everybody likes well, no, I, I agree on the commentary. Oh, I agree on the commentary. <laughs> but I, I, I think this is also what happens. Again, we're talking about the writers and everything. You also think I, I think this was a match that didn't have right this is a show that didn't have writers. It was a live show. You mm-hmm. know, there wasn't much more to it. I think you had agents and that was it. And when you don't have Cole and everybody else, did you just say they had Asians? Okay, uh, yeah, that's exactly what I thought. Agents, agents. They also had Asians. They also had Asians. Plenty of those too, I guess. They probably Um, did have Asians, yes. But anyways, but 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 you know, you don't have Cole and the other guys trying to push that narrative and awkwardly looking at the bashed up car during a tremendous match that's almost finishing on the main mm-hmm. event of Raw. Like, oh, we gotta remind you, there's a car that's bashed up over there. It's like, seriously. And that's not Cole, you know? That's 
Somebody, no, it isn't. Cool. Mention the thing. You know, I, I, I mean, anything you see something awkward like that, think of how somebody not as, I'll say it, talented as Michael Cole, experienced as Michael Cole, gets that capable. in their ear. Capable. Mm-hmm. Yes. Josh Matthews can't pull that off. No, I, no, to no. be fair, no, now you're seeing... The, that's not Baron Vaughn. That's a stand-up comedian. Who's the... What? Sorry. Saxton? Just fucking forget I said anything. Bear- <laughs> no, I don't want to know what you meant. Like Byron Saxton? I can't remember the guy. Baron Saxton. That's yeah. his name. Byron, oh, Byron, I like Byron, Byron, Byron Saxton. Saxton. Incorrect. What? He reminds me of a mannequin that someone only halfway brought to life. <laughs> I'm like, not a fan. Like the old Nickelodeon show? Yeah. Oh, man. Oh. I don't know. No, I, I do love Byron Saxton for, um, I think it was some point during the Jericho Neville match. Uh, uh, just... Ne- like Neville hit something crazy, and then uh, Byron Saxon just goes, "That was sick!" Like what <laughs> announcing set? <laughs> Who refers to a move as sick? Like that's amazing. And, and going back to, I, I I don't remember who it was, but or what they were talking about. But I remember it was Titus O'Neil on commentary. Yes, and Titus O'Neil slam dunked. I, I think it was JVL. On something that he kept on saying, I think it was about the main event or or the, or the car being there or something like that, and it was just the perfect timing of going. There's a match going on. I don't care about this shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, call the damn match. Mm-hmm. And it, it mm-hmm. sounds like finally somebody's getting. Hopefully, somebody's telling these guys, "Hey, look, call it." You know, I, 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 that's not that's happened. That's happened several times. Over the last mm-hmm. couple of months, I've noticed, and mm-hmm. and I can't say every time, but I feel like it's whenever guys like Titus are out there, like those extra guys, you know. And I think that's, you know, they are on live TV. There is a lot of control, but just like I, I say, you know, Cena is sending his message. There's the going in business for yourself, you know. They're they're, they're on live TV. Nobody's going to stop them from saying, "Hey, idiot, call the match," because that's all what we're thinking. And now we, Titus just got on our side, you know, and, and yeah. it makes us love him even more because we're like, "Yes, please." Titus follows me. He's my he's my friend. <laughs> he me. So you know, we're we're like we're close like that. Then so, you know, sorry, Chris. That's okay. <laughs> uh, them putting over matches during other matches and other storylines during storylines. I mean, that's been standing standard operating procedure for years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I remember WWF superstars in the nineties when there would be one match going on and they're talking about another match. Mm-hmm. Right. That's just, that's just well, how it's done for so long, but people it's a, it's a, it's gotta, an advertising trick that does not work anymore. Yeah. Well, with, with that, it's usually that match featured, um, I'm going to say a, a, a top star and a jobber. Oh, yeah, totally. And that they, was they don't stars. care about that match. They care about promoting their brand and the one that you have to pay uh, probably 30 bucks back then to mm-hmm. buy on pay-per-view. And it's just like, okay, what are we going to do now? Okay, it's also we're talk about this match. Also, in, in, I've, like, it was an attempt to really like get viewers to stay with them and not go to <clears> anywhere else, too. Right, like, right, yeah. I, and but yeah, I mean, there's not a necessity for that anymore, at least on a level of like raw or anything. Mm-hmm. They were really bad about it during the Attitude Era because they would straight up cut away from matches mm-hmm. for backstage mm-hmm. segments. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. okay, we understand that these two guys are wrestling, but what's Stone Cold doing in the back? And just like anytime yeah. you see sure, the WWE yeah. live events coming up in your your town, you're like, we don't give a shit about this match. So <clears throat> yeah. All right, on that point, uh, one, let me check into the chat room, see if there's any uh, all caps in there. Uh, but <laughs> it probably is. Uh, hey, uh, just some, some real, real real quick things. Uh, Matt Connor saying, since you're talking Japan, Styles versus Okada in uh, New Japan uh, uh, Amazing. Dominion is worth checking out. So, mm-hmm. And he also did link us there for the, uh, the, the Madden article. I have that tagged to uh, read a little bit later. Uh, can we have Mike? Yeah, Michael, Japan. Michael Cole and Byron Saxon to be commentators all the time. Yeah, seriously, seriously. Um, so give us more shows where there's no agenda. <laughs> That's basically it. Give us more house shows. That's basically it. Uh, side note: I, I I mentioned this last night on the Raw wrap up, but I really want to get this out there. Um, if you have nothing better to watch before Raw goes on, you're just kind of waiting. Pop on that pre-show. It's actually kind of entertaining. Uh, there's a really good vibe going on between. Uh, uh, um, uh, Corey Graves and and uh, Otunga and, and and Scott Stanford right now. Otunga. 
So, and, and they're having a lot of fun with it. Just, uh, I, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised if you pop in there just for something to watch going into it. And, and honestly, it's actually kind of given me an interesting context for watching Raw. That makes me more interested in it. Is that and, the one on Periscope? No, no. No? No, the okay. one on... Incidentally, I'm real happy to see Otunga back. Mm-hmm. I am very happy. Is he, I think well, he wrestled some house show recently. Yeah, you know, he so won. No, no, he wrestled. That. that was the thing. He wrestled on Sunday at a house show, and Corey Graves kept going. He's like, I, it was, I was at. Yeah, I wrestled last night, and I was looking good. He's like, Oh, really? Uh, what's your win loss record for last night? And, and he's like, Oh, it doesn't matter. I, oh, I look good, you know. And he's like, <laughs> oh, How are the lights? How are the lights in that town? Because you had the best view, you know. And he kept going, and he was. He, he <laughs> shouted out, "Somebody tweet me." Tweet me the result of last night's match with David Otunga. <laughs> like, and he kept like ragging on him for the rest of the show, all the way up to the buzzard at the end. Uh, so seriously, I, I think you should check it out. It's it's a lot of fun. Those guys are really livening it up. So um, to the point where we're, we were talking last night, like like those three need to be. Um, side note, commentary wise, brought up last night with Mad Mike. Um, why can't we break up the commentators? Like they used to on Nitro, like first hour different commentators just so we have a different sound in our head just mm-hmm. just just there I'm, who would who would be your second one though who just what my Corey graves rich no 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 no, no, no. Ooh, just just the, right. no no first hour give me first hour different commentators you know and and uh give me give me the main team for the the other two that'll break it up i think you, so so we bring back mark madden is that what you're saying no well, <laughs> well, does Scott have to get a job again? Tony Schiavone's not doing anything. Might no, as well bring him back. To it. No, actually, he's doing baseball. Plus, I knew. So, anyways, on that note, we got to go to break. So, we got to get back with a big question, and we got to make sure we got time for big league John McChesney for Indie Mayhem show this evening. But, uh, anyways, uh, yeah, please support our friends. Uh, whenever we have somebody in the studio, we actually got somebody to come into the studio because we happen to have an extra pizza that I kicked us one night. Mm-hmm. Slice on Broadway, sliceonbroadway.com here in Pittsburgh. If you're in the area in the South Hills of Pittsburgh and Beachview along the tracks, uh, or you're over in Carnegie, PA on Main Street, it is the place to be. Good stuff. Supporting Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh podcasting, not in Japan. I gotta take that graphic away. Uh, <laughs> supporting <laughs> Pittsburgh podcasting with pepperoni pizza in Pittsburgh, and uh, so thanks to them. Check them out. PGH underscore slice on the Twitter, as well as uh, uh, slice on Broadway on Facebook and Instagram. You'll get hungry too. So let's take a peek. What happened last week on the round the Sorgatron Media casts, and uh, and we'll be right back. <laughs> With a big question. It's time, I think, Sawtooth have an intoy in the Pittsburgh Underground. So, Tron here, since you ain't come down to visit, since you ain't gonna snort no cat dander with Sawtooth, Sawtooth needs assistance in other ways. This is my first Gateway 2000. Wow. Fix 33DX. Um, I had the math coprocessor. But if you go to analytics.pinterest.com, log into your account, you can see this amazing dashboard. It, it kind of reminds me a bit of uh, what you get for insight on pages. What's happening is Red Bull is teaming up with, with Activision for Destiny, creating a, a DLC for the game. Uh, does, so, does it give you wings? No. <laughs> Actually, my, who Last knows? night I went to Dependable Drive-In, which is a place that I've heard about probably for about a decade at this point, and for whatever reason, just never made it to. But yeah, air sex is the greatest sporting spectacle in the world. So it, it started off as like a small idea, uh, you know, like a parody of an air guitar show, and it just grew from there, it just snowballed. It was because we saw an opportunity to grow a project. We were like, let's ride this thing and see how it goes. Oh uh, no, my camera has the uh, the follow my face feature and even though I'm sitting <laughs> still, it thinks I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> it just did it. <laughs> I'll fix this manually, Sorky. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it didn't follow your face that time. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right. It's a wrestling there mayhem show that? where we what don't understand uh, technology here. Uh, Chachi Plays for Kids is coming back again. The 24-hour Game-A-Thon for Youth Arts Programs in Pittsburgh. August 7th and 8th at the Toonsium or join us live. ChachiPlays.com. Find out how you can make a difference too and donate today. ChachiPlays.com. Up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B-A, B-A, start! 
so I, I am playing the John Cena sexy high school adventure with three exclamation points. So I met Johnny. Mm-hmm. He he uh, he wants me to write his. He, I, I have to stand up to Johnny. Is or Johnny, run home Johnny is bullying you? I like guess he does have an anarchy painted on his chest. Also. Also, why does I didn't know that there was that many letters in fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they asked us that a lot of them. I don't know if it's saying fuck like a really long like, but it, it's just very long. Maybe he's using the Swedish version. Yeah, hmm. the Swedish version. Uh, so fuck who? Uh, no, that I, guy. I, I want you guys to do this with me. Okay. Please pick an answer. I don't, I don't uh, know so, I so the, 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 the so the the options are uh, f that guy fight right back uh, or run home like a crybaby chump crybaby Cry. chump. Let, how about uh, crybaby chump too? Yeah, let's, yeah, I like crybaby chump. Mm. <laughs> All right, so so you're gonna click on it, okay? Or, or you want me to you may do crybaby? Yeah, cry go, for it, go for it. Go for it. Only John knows that we're sensitive. Yes. Oh, yes. Johnny. No, what happens? I don't need this. By the way, my name is Fuckosan. Oh, okay. Fuck-o-san. It, for for those of you who don't know, but it's, it's the uh, the banners covering it up. But yes, and it's Riz plays games, Sorg. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll fix that. Riz plays games. You bought, home, you bought it back home. Riz this plays is, is, games. Oh no! And there's your oh now man. You're back home. Teach is gonna teach. Teach is gonna kill me. Oh no. Uh, 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 Okay, okay. Or Johnny's going to do it first. Well, that little diversion. Thank you for that. And uh, please check out everything else on Sogatron Media. And, of course, Chachi Plays. You saw an ad there as well. Or listen to, I guess. Um, so with that, let's go to the big question with Papa Lunchbox. What you got for us? Hi, everybody. Mamo Papa Lunchbox. Um, we've been, uh, I have a real good conversation this week and, uh, we touched a little bit, uh, on wrestling fans and we all, I think we all can agree there's different kinds of wrestling fans out there. Um, and, uh, it got me to thinking and uh, I'm curious what, uh, what everybody's opinion on this is as we are all wrestling fans. So my question Mm -hmm. this week, the big question is... What makes a good wrestling fan? Mm, wow. What makes a good are you, you're assessing us yeah. as fans. We're self assessing a good fan. Exactly. I feel like, what, what is yeah. it that makes a good wrestling fan? Are we, I, 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 I want this to is a big question where we piss everyone off. Yeah, this, this exactly. is where Yeah, let's do that. Oh boy. <laughs> I, I mean I, okay, so let's qualify this as as you know, this is gonna be like in our opinion, what are the wrestling fans that we like to talk with and associate mm. with, right? Like like I don't want to like I don't want this to be a fan bashing thing. No, yeah. absolutely not. It's that's why it's it's not what is what makes a bad fan. It's what makes a good right. wrestling. Fan. Right, 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 right. Okay, okay, okay. And and okay, okay. All right, I'm working on this. Anybody have one right, right off the bat? All right. Okay. So, Bruce? I have a quick one. Uh, to me, it's to give everything a chance. If you have an indie fed that you want to go to, go to that. If you have, if you like ROH, if you want to watch ROH, go watch ROH. If you want to watch TNA, watch TNA. If you want to watch Lucha, watch Lucha. Have have the have a vast variety of things. Also, don't always bash the people that like a different thing that you don't like. <laughs> that that kind of sounds like bashing, but I'm just trying to figure out a way to say it, which is doesn't but i can't do it right now but uh <laughs> it, it it was it's just to the point it, it, it's where i'm like trying to think of a way to say these things but uh <laughs> yeah it, just to be open about things some people like things you don't like some people like things you don't like so maybe just you know balance it out a little bit <laughs> this is all these are all just like rules for being an okay person on the internet yeah <laughs> kind of yeah, yeah. Um, can I go next? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah. Were, you, were you done, Riz? Yes. Okay. Um, two things I think make a good wrestling fan. Mm-hmm. And they both start with the letter P. 
Uh, Pizza? One is passion, oh. and the other is Pizza. perspective. Oh. No, no, no. I can see where you'd think that, but no. <laughs> um, passion Sorry, and man. perspective. Uh, loving wrestling and all of the madness that goes along with it, because mm-hmm. let's let's be honest, wrestling is a very difficult thing to love. <laughs> it's, it how many times have we uh, compared watching TNA to being in an abusive relationship? Mm-hmm. Because you remember how good it used to be, and it's never going to be that good again. <laughs> um, but uh, you have to you have to be able to take the good uh, with the bad, and I think having a passion for professional wrestling will help you in that as will perspective knowing that what you're watching is written by people who are completely fallible. Mm -hmm. They make mistakes just as much as everybody else. That's important. And, uh, uh, knowing, knowing something about the history of professional wrestling and where things are coming from and being able to appreciate that I feel is also very important. So those are my, uh, my two things. Wow. Wow. I thought of, I thought of three traits that I think kind of fed. Um, I, and they kind of tie into lunchboxes. They have to be um, enthusiastic. Mm-hmm. We, they have to be, you know, they have to love, you know, professional wrestling in a way where it makes them, it obviously makes them excited, you know, um, all that stuff. Uh, they have to be respectful, which I think kind of plays into that as well, is the, uh, just the respectful, like you said, of sort of the greater thing, like you mentioned, that people are fallible, but mm-hmm. also just general respect in, in the case of respecting, you know, you know aspects of kayfabe and 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 certain things along those lines as well um and then the final one uh, i think that that should also be added to that is they need to be inclusionary uh because i i i don't want to say this is exclusive to wrestling but it's a very it's much is very much a group thing like you watch it in you know i think it's a thing that's best watched with other people Absolutely. and and you do it every monday yeah, so I – exactly. So I feel like it's something it, – to not exclude people and not to think, you, you know, to to, to and, and teach them maybe or, or, or do whatever to sort of get them excited and get them involved and make new fans. Um, there's, a, there's a really good podcast that just started recently from the guy – one of the guys that does the uh, Attitude Era podcast called How To Wrestling, uh, <laughs> which is him and his girlfriend basically – sort of going over like in detail, like every aspect of wrestling. Uh, and, and I really like it. Uh, cause that, that's the one thing it is. It is, has, it has to be inclusionary. It has to be something that you allow other people into. Um, so, so yeah, that, that, that would be my three. That's awesome. Okay. That's awesome. Uh, I, I like that cause you, uh, kind of to go off yours a little bit because I got to think about like, I, I, I think everybody's been at that point. Some of us aren't like really into sports. And when you just get dropped into watching a football game, you have no idea what's going on. And mm-hmm. somebody has to help you, right? And right. you have to be educated and, and to a certain point, you know, versus, you know, watching wrestling in a different kinds. And it's complicated because there's so much variety out there, right? Um, I mean, how many times have we seen people saying, you know, oh, I'm trying to get the girlfriend or showing her CM Punk, da da da, oh, he likes this wrestler, you know? Or the total divas gateway drug that that we've discussed over the past uh, year or so. I mean, I think that's that's very important. Um, but jeez, uh, jeez, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out a thing that doesn't sound condescending. Uh, but yeah, that's really that my that's really hard with this question, isn't it? But um, I mean, I mean, but we've seen that where where somebody will drop into a chat room or when we used to do the open hangouts. And or you see comments on some of our videos where you're like, you're talking about wrestling on a different level than we are, you know, <laughs> which is OK. And accepting mm-hmm. you, you also have to accept that, too. When you see 15,000 people out there, there are some that aren't having they're, they're, they don't know what the word work rate I, is. OK, I mean, a vast majority and um, and our kids and our whatevers. And, and, and I think I know what you're trying to say, Sorg. OK, and help me out. Help me out, Riz. Give, give me a lifeline. It, um, I'm, I'm, I don't want to I don't want to be negative, but don't be an insider. Mm. Don't use the insider terms. I like can't snarky. say don't be don't be. A, yeah. Yeah, don't, don't, be a, snarky, yeah. don't be a smart no, ass. Don't be like, a don't be a smart ass. 
Don't be. Yeah, that's Smart it. Smart cast. Sorg, did you just come up with that? Yeah, I don't think I've heard of it before. T-shirt. Motherfucking awesome. There's a t-shirt yeah. idea. Don't be there's a smart our, ass. There's our t-shirt idea. There's our uh, title for the show today. And there's what we learned today. <laughs> Good job, so we're in close the show now. I hope be a smart cat. I think we can boil it down to that. Let's see if there's any comments from the chat room. I think there was some. Uh, Matt Carlin's is saying, uh, the best pro wrestling fans are not afraid to let themselves get swept up in the moment. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yes. No matter how smart they are, they think they are. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm 27 years old, and I was on the edge of my seat last night mm-hmm. for a John Cena match and a Cesaro match. So I, I'm excited about wrestling. So why not? Why not be excited? That's just me. All right. And, uh, and uh, yeah. Yeah. So anyways... Yeah. Uh, no, I think that was a really good talk, and I can't wait to hear people's responses. I think it's going to go over really good on the Facebook as well. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, this week, if you respond to us, a hashtag WMS Big Question at us on Mayhem Show at Mayhem Show. Uh, we'll be giving you, geez, geez, uh, what what should we do? What should we give out this week? Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> What's that? Super Indy. Sorry, that's for the that's for the iTunes comments. I'm sorry. Oh, what do you? Uh, how about? Uh, Super Indie? Super Indie. We already gave away Super Indie. We already gave Super Indie? This, this year's, yeah. We already did did this year's. Uh, well, good thing there's 13 or 14. There's 13 more. <laughs> Let's pick one. Let's pick uh, one. How about, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll give you guys best of 2011. I saw that line around here. Um, so I know that one has a guy that looks very similar to Sami Zayn on it, for instance. Uh, I believe that also has Chavo Guerrero versus Zima Ion on it as well. And uh, so, and I'm trying to bring it up real quick so I can. It also to... has Z- Zima on puking. So if you like that one, <laughs> it does. If, you, if it you're into some puke fetishes, go check that out. You're not for emetophobes. <laughs> so nope. let us know what you think of of uh, of wrestling fans. Ooh, okay. Um, or, or wrestling fan, Eamon. Or wrestling fan. <laughs> I don't know who that guy is. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and his wet hot American Texas summer. God, I wish I could work Wet Hot American Summer into a uh, into wrestling <laughs> conversation. That's a fucking great that, 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 That'd be an awesome name for like an indie wrestling show. Yes, Wet Hot American Summer. Wait. Isn't that Russo's manager? Ooh, uh, Wet Hot American Lana. No. Mm. Wait, did you call no. Him Russo? I was going to say, did you call him Russo? <laughs> Russo? No, I said Rusev. Anyways. No, I thought you said Rusev. If you're digging the conversation, if you like the kind of wrestling fans we are, Go ProWrestlingTees.com. One way you can support us. Uh, actually, two places. ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. You can go there. Check out the awesome designs by Alex Cars. But if you want, don't be a smart ass. <laughs> Wait, actually, did you already put it up there? No, I haven't yet. But it's on my to-do list. And uh, Alex Cars, if you have the moment before I get a chance to, please go ahead and make a t-shirt and put it up there. <laughs> I just use the tools up there. Just, I mean, you guys, just just text, right? Just, just don't be a smart ass. How many people are going to buy that thing? Here's a hot tip. Uh, we actually, there's actually a sale going on. Um, I think starting Friday, maybe Thursday. Uh, there's a like, buy thirty dollars of t-shirts and you get free shipping or ten dollars off something like that. Uh, so keep an eye out for the tweets for that if you want to get that. Um, if you want to get your don't be a smart ass. But anyways, uh, but no, go to wrestlingmayhemshow.com. All the links are there. If you want something to wear on your back that supports the Mayhem Show in that way, uh, go to the spread shirt. Look for the button that says Mayhem Club. I know uh, uh, Matt Carlin says one of those t-shirts, and uh, of course the pro wrestling tees. And support the show, support indie wrestling via the pro wrestling tees, and uh, enjoy the show. I think I almost copped somebody else's podcast there. So, <laughs> hey, I just want to mention. I don't know how many of you guys watch this, but um, uh, you know, I was a big fan. Uh, before and 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 especially on the network, I was one of the first things I really plowed through a lot was the, uh, uh, the Legends roundtables that they've had, mm-hmm. and I feel like we kind of went back to that a little bit. Unfortunate circumstances as well, as well, but we had Dusty Stories on the network, mm-hmm. which was a live sit down with Ric Flair. That they love Ric, Ric Flair telling stories on a live mic uh, on TV again was beyond me. But Ric Flair, Did he cry again? Uh, no, no crying. I mean, there, no? There, there was a comment towards the end. He's like, he's like, you know what? I just want to say we've been here for a half an hour. None of us cried. Nobody shed a tear. We were all laughing and enjoying it. And so, and, and that's that's really significant mm-hmm. here when it comes to Dusty Rhodes. But it was him, Arn Anderson, J.J. Dillon, 
and uh, and and Pat. Uh, not Patrick Hayes, Michael Hayes um, was was part of it as well, and it was a lot of again a lot of stories, a lot of the ribs, a lot of the things you know you know talking about uh, Flair and him doing the the one upmanship a bit as well, um, and it was a really enjoyable thing, and I think it really you know for the most unfortunate reason we've seen a couple of times here the responses WWE has when they have their own network and can do something like this to really who's jamming music what the hell is going on no you're playing that, that damn that. game i'm trying to have a moment here riz i am not playing anything <laughs> I, I muted my I, I i'm not even touching anything Okay, who else brought up this game? Who's playing the John Cena? I don't know. I, it's, I, it's not. I know that I am a culprit, and <laughs> likely one, but it is not me. I am not who playing the John Cena down game. Down. Amen. I am Amen. Not, my hands are right here. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? A, a, anyways, back to the touching yeah. moment. Yeah, back to the topics work. Um. But no, I think it's really good. We saw this again, yo. Know, uh, when a warrior passed, uh, they had warrior week, right? They had a lot of content, you know, whether some of it was already in the can or whatever the case may be. Um, and it really shows, if nothing else, for everything else going on, you know, we're talking about state of the industry, state of John Cena, state of wrestling fans. WWE, I think, is the biggest fan of itself. And I don't mean that in a condescending way. That sounds really weird, I know. But <laughs> they're giving you opportunities. I feel like the people programming WWE Network are fans of wrestling because how much stuff on the network is not about WWE. Right? But if it, uh, what? The only thing I, I, I have to uh, say is if that's the case, put more of the old wrestling footage up for on demand. Okay. Because right now it's just the whole raw. Is it? It's just WWE, WCW, ECW. No, 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 no. There's yeah. more. And some, and some like. Well, even even that, like those things are like not even completely <clears throat> yeah. out there, like, or even like, even a good majority. Out oh, there. Okay, okay. When we you know somebody who has logged all of them. Yes, but 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 it's still what? there's 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 a priority here, okay? Yeah. There's a priority here. They can't just no be like boom, everything's up here. There's processing that needs to be done. There's organization. There's time windows. There is you know being able to say, hey guys, we put up all the rock and wrestling. It gives you another reason to come watch the stuff. It it, it no, I agree with that. Because you, yeah. you you if you just put everything up, then it's just this giant mass that everybody's waiting through, and, and they forget about all this stuff over here. And what are you gonna do? Re remind them? Oh, by the way, you know you can go check out this thing, and then that. Versus, here's a new thing, here's a new thing, here's a new old thing, here's a new old thing. Or putting the tough enoughs up when another tough enough is, is happening. You know, no, I, I, there's a I, agree. I agree, but uh, the one thing I'm talking about is uh, I actually listened to uh, one of the Rewatch Wrestling podcasts before. Uh, you, you mentioned them before. And they even mentioned, if you look on, their, on, on, the, on the WWE Network, there is no, like, the match... The thing where they have uh, Jimmy Snuka flying off the steel cage mm-hmm. is not on there. Okay. Like moments that they even mention ha- being integral parts to being a thing in professional wrestling are nowhere on WB Network. Okay, and there is an oversight and, and, there. And, 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 and it, that's the other yeah. thing is, what was that part of? Was that an MSG show? What what was that? Right? Mm. I'm like, and, and I don't know. I don't know. I have an answer to it. And I think more more telling is I I, I thought you were more talking about like other promotions because they have Smoky Mountain and all oh, these other ones. Yeah, yeah, that too in a certain extent. But, but I, I can see why the, they uh, hold off on. But that the other thing, the other thing, Riz, you need to think about is because I saw these stories early on. This is probably about six months in. There was a story about uh, some of the numbers and what people mm. go to. They can put that old stuff up, but there is a minuscule percentage of people that are going to go watch it. Okay. Okay? Like, generally, right. now, and even going back to maybe 90s pay-per-views, like the old pay-per-views, there are not a lot of people in, you know, versus there's a ton of people watching NXT, and there's a ton of people watching replays of pay-per-views in comparison to even all that old stuff, but you got to think how many old things are there. So generally, that's why you are seeing a lot of another flux of new content because that's the stuff that gets them on there, and it's about retention. It's not about. It, it, it's like the Netflix model. 
because they are starting to spell it's like Netflix. That's not a tagline, Michael Cole. And I know you're not the one making <laughs> they're not they're making you say that, but I think it's a worse thing. We figured it out. There's a lot of freaking things like Netflix these days. Um, yeah. Well, that's for another podcast. But uh, no, no, they're they're going with and like I say that that they don't have a priority on putting that stuff up. They will put it up when they've decided to do another like Smoky Mountain DVD or something or somebody important from that. I don't know. Passes away, unfortunately, right? Um, I, I think. But didn't they? Didn't they even put somebody? They put Carlos Clone in just to get the tapes. <laughs> so, or that was the rumor that they, the only reason okay. he's in is for the tapes from his from his territory. And how long? And we haven't seen that much. How, okay. But again, they they have a plan. <laughs> you know, they they there will be a reason, and there will be something. Maybe there will be a Puerto Rican Puerto Rican Pride Week on uh on a uh, WWE for some reason, and uh, that's oh, when Latin, they do that. Latin lover, the Latin lover, uh, Savio Vega. <laughs> Let's just be Savio Vega matches and Latin lover yeah. and. I don't know. I'd watch that shit. Let's yeah, do it. Yeah, why not? Why not? Right? It will give you a reason because you're not. People have only so many time, so much time in the day, and to get their attention and compete with everything else. Um, that not that I really think they're not going to get a lot of numbers. They drop that Carlos stuff. That's you know they're they're collecting. Um, there was a there's a story on the Dusty stories about how um, Dusty gave Triple H the uh, book the book from War Games. Mm-hmm. And and like he was like oh yeah here's this thing buddy and and, and like Triple H who's a, apparently a pro wrestling historian if you haven't been able to figure that out apparently put it in a glass case <laughs> so um, the WWE Network is Triple H's glass case uh, Vince McMahon's mm-hmm. glass case of we just became the curators and this is our museum and they're also the ones that get to rewrite history and mm-hmm. they can have that and they're sitting on that. Either way, it will get out. There is a process, but how many hours are there? Let's be honest. Of any of that stuff, when you get a tape library, and and just the, I mean, the process to log it, as Mike is familiar, Mad Mike is familiar with, and the process to ingest it into that system. I mean, I'm one person. I have not been able to get the entirety of the IWC catalog up online for digital download. <laughs> for instance. And they, how much stuff do they have in comparison? Man, I, I'm I'm just waiting for that Disco Inferno and the Raven match sort. Yeah, but I'm going to find that and put it on digital <laughs> download. That is going to be the title on the front page of the new launch of IndieWrestling.us. For mm-hmm. Riz, Disco Inferno versus Raven. And I, I'm just going to put that up as a free match at this point. I, I, there's something like that. So, anyways, speaking of tape libraries. Uh, all right, I think that's enough of that. Uh, I mean, nobody else watched the Dusty stories, right? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not butting you guys out. I'm like, I'm, I'm the only one that did. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I personally didn't get a chance to. No, but I definitely um, recommend it. It's great. I, yeah, definitely. But I love, I just love just wrestlers telling old war stories. It's just the best thing. The best thing. That's why I love. I the did podcast. in turn while the while the Dusty stories was happening, got caught a bit of the tough enough rerun. Mm-hmm. This this. Has anyone else like I, I? I haven't really been following like the Tough Enough coverage on this show. Has, has a lot of people been watching Tough Enough? I caught up. I caught up last week. It's. I'm not, I'm not wrong in saying it's really bad. Right? No, 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 no. What you bad. need to do is pair the episodes with Tough Talk. You cannot watch the episodes without Tough Talk. Okay. Like very much. Because I feel like they're just the. They just brought in a bunch of actors, and they're the worst actors possible. <laughs> like they they. Nope, I don't buy. It. And, and like everyone's an asshole. Like nobody's like the good guy you're rooting for. Like, well, they're like, all everyone's a dickhead. All the ones that are still on there are jocks, mm-hmm. and yeah. they're supposed to be. They are dicks. The only one that's not really that much dickish is ZZ, and he is, you know. Zizi, and he's probably not going to make it through the, ne- the few next few rounds. Yeah, he'll like, either get voted off or pass out. One of the two. Yeah, like <laughs> like the episode opened with like three different groups of people getting into like separate fights of like why they belong here or whatever. Like it's like, what are you doing? Like, like it, it's it's the weirdest. Thing. And, like, and the worst, the worst are the divas that they have. That they oh yeah, which oh, yeah. is a lot more catty than. 
anything I've seen. In well, they're all just the same. Like, I can't tell any of them apart. You know what I mean? Like, none of them are different mm. than, than mm-hmm. each other, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Oh, no, that makes sense. I don't know. I just watched it, and I was just like, I don't really want to watch Tough well, Enough seriously, anymore. Tough Talk I, is, uh, you, you, you have to pair it with the episode, but um, and a nice Chianti. Uh, but uh, it, it's, it's, it's The Miz being the, the best ever. Uh, because I mean, yeah, I'd watch it for the Miz. Please, uh, he just goes down the line and just asks questions and be like, "What was the deal with this?" And you get like so much backstory on what actually happened with it, mm-hmm. and then you get more reaction. You actually get more from the judges in this at that point, yeah. and, and 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 even callbacks and everything. I and it really, that's the way to watch it completely. Um, so I actually really hate the uh, I really hate the judges too. Like Daniel Bryan and Paige especially are just like I'm here for the paycheck. Which is, I, I'm just gonna say words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, sadly, Hulk Hogan is the one who's doing the best job. Probably, <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> he because he knows what it takes to be in the business for. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, you have very like like the gap between Paige mm. and, and and Daniel versus Hogan is. <laughs> You know, I'm saying Chris Jericho isn't more involved. Like Jericho is like the Ryan Seacrest of this thing. Yeah. Or, or uh, TJ. Jericho should have been a judge. I, yeah, I feel I feel like that because like I'm, I'm there's an ad that popped up. What was I watching? Um, it, it popped up somewhere else on the network, and it was like one of the most outspoken spoken guys in WWE, Chris Jericho. He doesn't say anything. Mm-hmm. He introduces segments with Renee Young, and they move on. So, so Daniel Bryan, what do you think? Like. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, that's like that's job. it. That's it. You, you you call him out as outspoken, and then eh, that's it. You know. I don't know. If, I don't know if it's the reason they they had him host was because he hosted that one reality show like on. Uh, oh. What was it? Like what? What was the show he, he and hosted? He, well, was he like was on competition. He was on Dancing with the Stars. Oh, yeah. What was the other one? It was some singing competition or something that he hosted. I don't know. Uh, hosting. I, I know. He did, he did like a he did like a game show on top of a tower. What? what? I remember this. It was they remember. had like maybe f- five shows, and then they got canceled. Wait, wait, wait. Was he also part of BattleBots? <laughs> yeah, he he did. He hosted BattleBots for a little while. Jeez. Oh, okay, I'm gonna figure out what this show is. You guys continue. I'm on. also kind of working. You, know, you know who we can blame for all this, hmm. or what exactly we can blame for all this? Total Divas. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, really? Oh yeah. They put Total Divas on, and they're like, whoa. I guess we can. We're really good at reality t- TV, and we were expecting tough enough to be an actual like competition. And what it ended up being was another reality TV show that nobody wanted. Mm-hmm. Oh, so w- what I'm thinking of is a redemption song with Chris Jericho, and and the one I was thinking was called Downfall. I love that you both had like separate ones. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. On that note, I want to learn, guys. What did you What did you learn from wrestling this week? Mm. Mm. I I got one. Mm-hmm. Nothing. What? No, 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 no. Comma. <laughs> Not period. Nothing. Comma. Nothing in the world is more interesting than a car that Brock Lesnar destroyed. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Um, I got one. What idiot goes out with just the axe handle? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it, it really didn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm like, what are these sticks? These like, at first I was like half paying attention, and I thought he had like one of those hacksaw Jim Duggan um, in uh, uh, two foam by two by fours, and I'm like, why does that look deformed? Was he horrible? I thought there? they had like, you know those little like, cricket wooden, bats. You know those like wooden sticks that you dip like paint into to like test the color or whatever <laughs> when you're painting your house. Like the, I feel the, like they had like the, a bigger version of the those palette things. swatch or whatever, right? I'm yeah. not a painter. Wow, it's it was it was weird. Um, yeah. What about you, Eamon? Oh fuck, I, I can't. What think. about you, Riz? Um, well, I learned. Uh, I, I, first of all, I learned that uh, I can't stand the John Cena dating sim. <laughs> <laughs> and he tapped secondly, out. what? He tapped out. I tapped out. And secondly, um, 
waking up the se- at seven thirty and thinking you've you didn't even miss the main event is a weird feeling to have. Because I saw <laughs> because of the uh, the tag match, I was looking at it. I'm like, I didn't miss it. And then the main the main event didn't happen yet. And then they they the match ended and they ended everything. I was like, oh, that's that's weird. It was sad. Oh, and then wow. I watched it again and I was happy again. Mm. 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 Amen. I got my what I learned. Uh, uh, I learned from Tough Enough uh, this week that uh, Billy Gunn is really good at making women cry. <laughs> he literally, they, they did a challenge where they had to swim to a boat and then pick up an NXT oh, championship yeah. and then bring it back. And, and like everyone but two people did it, but one of the girls like – lost her belt in like the water or whatever yeah. and billy gunn's just like yelling at her about it like in her face like it's the weirdest thing like i i i i guess you keep hold of your belt when you're swimming with it i don't know there's a good point on that <laughs> later though there there was a good point on that later they were trying to make though, about when you get a belt you take that everywhere and you do not yeah. lose it and talked about dealing with it and carry on, which is always something yeah, I wondered about. Yeah, that's a weird like, lesson to teach someone. <laughs> when when they, also, when they're, when they're like swimming with alligators, bumping. don't lose the freaking belt. And and, mm. and, and, and when you Okay, and at that point, you need to watch that tough talk, because there's more about the belt. <laughs> and there's a pretty good swerve on the belt. Um, so, yeah, yeah, please, please watch that and get back to me. From the Facebook, we had a lot of, uh, we try to put this out there on, on the social medias as well. A lot of responses in our Facebook group, group for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Shireman, he uh, says he learned that the neutralizer from the second rope ain't happening. Oh, it's going to happen, happen one day. Well, not yet. Not yet. That, that had to have been it if he would have done it. Uh, Kyle learned that Brock Lesnar blew through uh, New Day in Japan like Godzilla through paper mache buildings. Okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, Matt Collins learned that Nikki Bella will have the Diva title for at least 300 days. Uh, Alex Carr is out there in California. Learned that uh, Bram has re-signed with TNA. <laughs> oh, my God. Check the big I, I, board. What? Uh, check, oh, well, we'll get to the big board in a moment. Okay? I do have to bring this up. That's, that, this, is, this has been a developing story throughout the show. Um, oh, sorry, dear. Riz. Riz, what are you, what are you saying? That, that joke, uh, I, I can't believe it's still a thing. Uh, if you go, if you go to TNA Breaking News on on Twitter right now, it it is just for for the past few weeks, it has just been them going fed up with the, with what you see every money every Monday. Great news, Bram has just resigned a new multi, <laughs> <laughs> and you don't need to. Like it's just a whole list of just Bram pictures. With one of them, I believe, is with Vader, which is weird. Like I, I, I wish we can see this right now. Uh, mm-hmm. I have it up, but it. I'm, I don't. I don't know if you want me to show it to you, Sorry. No, 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 no. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about okay, it. Okay, I will not show it to you. Everybody, go I'm, check it out. What's the site again? It is. It is actually on a Twitter account. TNA oh. Breaking News. Okay. Go check that out. All right. And also, lastly, Matt Collins learned that Brock is determined to kill Jamie Noble. Right. <laughs> right. Media. So, um, also, Hot Wheels learned that John Cena and Cesaro can't do wrong. And uh, Mad Mike learned that Brock Lesnar with two axes versus Jacob Goodnight with the hook is a Brock versus authority match I need to witness. So, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um, let us know what you thought about this kind of pared down. We're kind of well, working on the format a little bit. I think I think we need to, yeah, yeah, we're this in a little bit. And, uh, and uh, I think it's been really good. So uh, you can join us here, of course, live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com about 9 p.m. Eastern time. We get started, and we have two shows, about three hours of wrestling talk. And you can join so many other shows, including the Midweek War. And, oh, I made the mistake of closing that link. Oh, apparently the TNA Big Board is completed. Arson Crafts with Matt Carlin's <laughs> has happened, and I did not cue the proper uh, uh, thing. But it's out there on the Twitter as well. Uh, I presume this is going to be debuting on the Midweek War. Uh, so please go check that out. And let us know what you think about it being, um, you know, we did uh, split it up here a few weeks ago. And thank you guys for, for rolling with that. And, uh, and, 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 and it's nice and bite-sized. I know I, I typically get to NXT uh, because of my schedule. 
and um and, and it's nice to be able to know i'm not gonna like you know get a, like a lot of crossover there and i like and just talk about nxt if i wanted to uh myself so and that is uh, coming up there's a look at the big board if you're on video with us everybody's in tna we have a listing for global force we got rude and magnus there hit by a train uh mickey uh out as in i guess not in either promotion uh so we have like uh, what was that it's shaw storm gunner low-key aries for instance question mark uh king mo and who's the other one homicide and uh yeah. everybody in tna so we'll see what happens as as whatever is developing with impact wrestling global force who knows maybe you can get an answer from john mcchesney here on the indie mayhem show so thank you everybody at dj lunchbox for papa lunchbox also at panel riot the fine fine podcast that he's involved in uh anything special you, are you, you still rolling through the x-men uh, animated series we are watching the X-Men animated series, uh, although I got uh, – well, intern Stan got a tweet today from uh, former guest Kristen Ross. She wants to discuss The Wicked and the Divine, so uh, look for that as an upcoming episode. And uh, we have finally settled on our Patreon subscriber exclusives. Nice. Uh, I am going to be reviewing one completely random comic a month. Um and uh, you can you can get that at any price, literally any price. You can give us a nickel per episode, and you can get these exclusive reviews. Um, all you have to do is head over to panoriot.com, click the button that says Patreon, and go from there. Excellent, excellent. Riz plays games. I like I, everybody here has something to promote. I love this. Riz plays games. I screwed up your Twitter. I apologize. It just seems, okay. it seems too long. At Riz plays games on the Twitter. Uh, what's going on? I know you just posted a Let's Play that I didn't know I was involved in. Yeah, wait. You didn't know you were involved in that one, sir. I don't know. Chachi said, "Hey, we're playing uh, no, that I game," and a, I logged I'll, in. I'll, I'll just make it short and sweet. I was a backer in for a game called Quiplash. Uh, it's a very fun party game uh, made by the guys who made uh, you know Jack. Uh, I posted the. I posted all the uh, Twitch allows you to post all of the videos directly from Twitch. So I wanted to, you know, space it out a little bit, but they decided, oh, we're going to throw it all at you first. Uh, but yeah, uh, it is a very fun game. I, I can't, I can't wait to play it some more. And also, uh, if I may, I'm going to, uh, start this now. I'm going to make my little thing for, uh, it's called operation supply drop. And what I'm going to do, is I want to get one at least as the money for one PlayStation Four or Xbox One, and once I get that much money, I will play. I will do a nice little mini marathon for for Operation Supply Drop for you guys. Awesome. Uh, and like I said, it is it, it it's not going to be twenty four hours, but it's going to be it's going to be a lot more fun, uh, a lot of fun, and uh, I'm going to have. Maybe somewhere down the line, I'm even going to throw in some uh, cool little uh, prizes in the in the mix too. So who knows? Just, just stay tuned. It's going to be fun. Awesome. And finally, he's the commentator over at Inspire Pro Wrestling. I, I didn't get that out at the beginning of the show. I apologize. Uh, but uh, go check out InspireProWrestling.com <laughs> at Amen Two, <laughs> please. Know co-host on the indie mayhem show uh the the curator of the wet heart hot corpus christy summer uh day camp and uh and 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 doggy daycare uh combination there uh and uh <laughs> there's free wi-fi there's yeah it's nice there's free there's free wi-fi and doggy bags <laughs> Do you have anything to respond to that? Do you want to actually no, promote wow. something, no. or did I just you did cover it? All. You okay. did all. You did all. You needed me. Yeah. White, white, white hot uh, Corpus Christi Summer dot com. No. <laughs> you say it different every time. <laughs> 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 all right and i'm at sorgatron please check out everything at sorgatronmedia.com especially the power hour myself and lb power. talking about uh rogue wedding djs for instance and we do we do allude a little bit to the fact that we podcast a lot including this if you want a little bit behind the scenes of what's going through my head and his head on on, on things like this um mm -hmm. it's so strange because i'm trying to promote and i'm trying to talk about the things we talked about and i'm trying to remember what was on the podcast and what was over uh greasy fries at the five guys uh on friday <laughs> for lunch so well, it's I getting can tell weird. you that our conversation about the mayhem show happened at five guys oh okay that that's the part the, the, yeah. the show assessment happened at five guys right uh, what we so. talked about on um 
power uh, hour uh, on the power hour this week was um taking time and watching the damn fireworks in front of you and also being proud of the work that you do mm-hmm. cool. so go check it out thank you all for that and we'll see you guys next week mayhem out just wait just wait just wait just wait This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.